Welcome back, everybody. It's Dean here, and I'm with James Rimmer of Expense Reduction Analysts. And um, James, I've known how long now? Two years? A year? Yeah, getting on for that sort of time. At least 18 months, Dean, since yeah. my early days, since I joined uh, ERA. So, James, tell us, tell us what you do at ERA. What do I do at ERA? There's a there's a question. Well, Dean, you know, um, you know what it's like at the moment for business leaders to face inspiring costs that are just taking away their mm -hmm. profits. And I guess that's where me and the team come in. Uh, and what makes us really special is our cost specialists. And I'm sure we'll come on to it shortly. But in my old world, we had lots of consultants that came in and tried to help you, but didn't know enough about their topics. And what really makes me and my colleagues special is that deep knowledge of knowing exactly where to look for an organization. So luck, we can help you stop throwing these profits away by spending far too much with some of your suppliers. Let us help you. So I'm now a consultant with ERA and, um, you know, one of um, a number across the UK that help businesses uh, reduce their overhead costing. Mm -hmm. So so when we're talking about about reducing cost, let's just play difficult devil, devil's advocate for a minute. Surely well, you've only just started, Dean. You can't you can't do that straight. I have up. to be nice for a minute. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, let's just ask. I mean, any business looking to save money, there's there's a, an incentive to do it from a profit point of view. But right now, there's an incentive to do it from just the fact that inflation's eating everything away. Um, where do you see the inflation picture going? I mean, can you predict it? Do you have any kind of guide where it's going? No. Oh, blimey, Dean. Well, look, we know we know inflation in terms of CPI inflation is going to hit 11 to 12% this calendar year. And the, the next hike will be in October, as we see the energy price cap or not cap um, hit households. And I, I think for businesses, you know, many wish they only had inflation of, you know, of that. You know, for, for businesses, some of the organisations I work with, you know, energy alone has gone up 500%. I mean, there's no energy cap. For, for businesses so if you're a manufacturer that relies on um energy or indeed any food goods um that would have come from ukraine or russia you're, you're seeing inflation of three four five hundred percent it, it's nowhere near the the cpi inflation we talk about and see on the news so wh where will inflation go um i mean at the moment the the, the feel is that we're going to start seeing a recession and a recession brings with it some strange benefits, which generally slows inflation. Um, but of course, what it also does is wipe out the economy for 18 months. So uh, what we're going to see over the, the rest of this year is going to be a really interesting time. And, and to be honest, whatever happens in um, Ukraine at the moment, we, we're going to see the UK economy suffer more than many of the others across the world. Okay, so that's not a positive <laughs> picture. And you didn't. No, you never asked a positive picture, Dean. You just asked where inflation's going to yeah. go. And, and there is a positive inflation um, a message from all of this, Dean. That actually, recession as tough as it is, history suggests those businesses that are best placed to weather that storm come out of a, the recession in a really strong position. Every recession we've looked at over the last hundred years. What follows is a huge rebound of growth. And if your business is well placed for that, um, you're in a really strong position. So there is definitely some green shoots of optimism. It's making sure you can live throughout that recession period of around about 18 months to get to the other side. But there absolutely are some positives to get to that point. Okay. So that's good. That's good news. So so when a business is now I'm going to throw the tricky question on you. When a business is looking to protect itself from a recession, what are some of the things that you would advise them to do in terms of their budgets and all of that stuff beyond the obvious of, you know, be careful what you decide to spend? What about what they're already spending? Well, the flip side of that, Dean, and history um, is really clear on this. History is also be really careful what you slash and burn. Mm -hmm. 
And, and the reason for that, and I guess we're seeing this with the airports at the moment, you know, if you shed um, a lot of your staff because you're worried about the um, the kind of the current position, what you do is take your eye off the ball for the 18 month period that comes. And when growth comes back, you're not best placed to do it. So what, what we always recommend and certainly what I recommend with my clients is review your spend, but look at it from an operational efficiency point of view. What can you do to be more efficient rather than what can you slash and burn, which unfortunately is what some organizations do. And they're the ones that really struggle to rebound following like a recession. Like a hatchet job, basically. Yeah, yeah. And to be fair, you know, I've been a CFO. Um, I've been there looking at budgets and starting to put um, lines through stuff. And unfortunately, what happens when you do that in isolation um, you know, that's cutting your marketing budget, your R&D budget. What you start to do is cut those things that it's difficult to turn back on quickly. And those organizations that are really ready for the recession now, what they're going to do is steal your competitors' customers, steal your competitors' um, assets, steal, you know, the best staff. They're, they will absolutely be ready for it. And, you know, it really is a case of being ready and remembering that generally – recession does not last too long 18 months is a storm that you can weather as long as you've got a plan to how you get to the other side um but yeah operational efficiency is without doubt the the best thing you can do and it, it is a tough one though knowing like we had a recession because of covid but it was kind of like a cotton wool recession wasn't it <laughs> yeah it was it was and and actually um what we saw until the terrible events in ukraine was the rebound of the recession to things you know post covid if we can use that phrase starting to get better and we saw that bounce back and ultimately that bounce back um got thrown off by the the events in ukraine and unfortunately that has had such an impact on um, on the world, on Ukraine, but also on global supply chains and the many things we um, you know rely on. You know, fertilizer. You know, so much of that comes from Ukraine and Russia. The price of that has gone through the roof, which means next year's prices for crops will be at all time highs. So again, when we start looking into next year, we can already see um, price increases still continuing. So do you see, because okay, the only reference point, and I was talking to about this over the weekend with somebody, there's a generation of people living today who've never seen circumstances like this before. Because even the last time this happened with hyperinflation and recession and all of this stuff, there's the, you know, the financial crash, which was one thing. And that was like, what, 12 years ago, something like that. Uh, yeah, and, and, and a bit. It's the 2008, and and you're absolutely right, Dean. What what we see is people people don't have experience of inflation, and you know, kind of find their way through it, and now they don't have experience of recession. And by no means is a recession guaranteed. It just it feels like it's heading that way at the moment, mm -hmm. and it seems unlikely to 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 not happen. Um, but you're right. Lack of experience um, is a challenge, and because of that, the ability to make a knee jerk um response um becomes a, a greater risk and in some ways that's what um, mm. me and my colleagues are, are, are trying to help people look at and say actually rather than a you know a, taking a wrong decision what can you do internally within you know your own organization at the moment to be as efficient as you possibly can that that should be your focus not a knee-jerk response that you might live mm. to regret and and we're seeing that with the bank, really. I mean, if we think of, I don't want to get too heavy in this, but I think it's useful. If you look at what happened in 2008, and then you look at the, what was it, the 70s, late 70s with hyperinflation, they controlled inflation with interest rates. Exactly. And interest rates went ballistic. But we've come from a space where the government pulled back on in you know in 2008 really brought the interest rates down to a level we've never seen before and we've been living with these tiny interest rates the problem is that if the bank of england starts hiking that up people's mortgages you know there's been a massive boom in buying second houses and all this stuff you know you can make a lot of money renting out houses because the interest rates are so low 
you know, if you've got a deal at whatever rate, I can't remember what it was, the lowest rate you could get, but if you've got a 1% deal, say, or a one and a half percent deal, and then the bank, the bank of England starts to jack that up. Every quarter of a percent is a huge shift in the profit margins. Uh, absolutely, Dean. And, and, and you're right. The, the economic response in a perfect world is if inflation's high, you pull the lever of interest rates going up. And actually, unfortunately, interest rates going up is likely to be the thing that just pushes us into a recession. You know, it, there's only so many levers um, and you've got to make the decisions in the long run. And of course, for businesses in particular, if you have high levels of debt, you are very vulnerable in a recession, which is which is one of the worries. You know, if you're a, an organisation now thinking we've got a lot of debt already, all that's going to happen is the cost of that debt will go up because interest rates will continue to increase and your sales will fall because it's a recession. So it gets more and more difficult than ever before to meet those repayments. And again, that's why that focus is operational efficiency, because we know exactly what's going to happen. Mm. I mean, and, and that's one of the key lessons, actually, from recession. You don't need to wait for someone to say we're in a recession to respond. You know, we know what's going to happen. We know where we're heading. Interest rates will continue to go up without a doubt. Inflation should come down, but this is unusual inflation because it's driven by world events, not necessarily the usual events. And every period of recessions had its own unusual events. The crash of 2008, the Gulf War before that, you know, all of these things have been unusual events that have triggered effectively an economic crisis. So, so when a business is looking at driving that efficiency, surely they're looking at, I mean, I'm just, to be tricky with you, just to look, surely they can find that saving themselves, right? Why would they need you? It's a good question, Dean. Why would they? And I, it goes back to what I said at the start. Um, and I've been a CFO for ten years, um, and have you know, have a, you know, very large multi-million pound, and indeed towards the end, multi-billion pound organisation. So I know, I know what it's like, and. What, what generally happens, and all CFOs do the same, we, we kind of look at our long list of spend and we think, yeah, we've done that, or that's not that large and stuff. And what, what happens is most organisations focus hard on their direct costs. Mm -hmm. And what they then don't focus on is their overhead costs. And that's where me and my team come in. Because, you know, a CFO can't have the expertise to look at all of their costs and they need to focus on what they know the best. So if you're an organization, uh, a manufacturer, you will know inside and out the price of steel, your raw materials and what that costs you. You probably won't have one eye on some of the costs of some of the smaller consumables. And that, that's where my team come in because that's all they do every single day. Our consumables experts, our fuel expert, they live and breathe those areas so they can mm -hmm. look at someone's costs and say, wow, you've got a great deal or wow, we can help you get a better deal and let us talk you uh, talk to you about some of the process improvements you can put in place as well. Uh, so yeah, you can do it yourself, but it will take longer. Mm -hmm. And without doubt, it will uh, reduce the level of savings because um, all that generally happens is internally an organization says, we'll get free quotes and then we'll go with the cheapest. What we do is we know every day what the price we got last week um, for a similar organization. So we know what the target price is and how to get to that point. And as I say, generally we'll say 30 to 40% more than an in-house team can do and generally deliver savings about five months before. And if you're heading into a recession, five months makes a huge difference. Yeah, because obviously if, if I was doing it here and I said, all right, guys, I want to save money on this and save money on this and save money on this and save money on this. Somebody has to expend energy to do that, and it's not their day job. And that's, and that's why, generally, we can do it. I, I say probably about five months quicker, and that, that's a doing a full process as well. And, yeah, of course, anyone you get within your organisation to do it, Dean, just like many, they have to stop doing their day job, mm -hmm. which might not be the best use of their time. And and I guess from my old world, I, I was not always a big fan of external consultants, um, if, if I'm honest. Um, and now I absolutely can see the benefits because um, the right external consultants can give you the shortcuts. You just can't do yourself. They can quite quickly say, right, come on, we know exactly where to look. Just like you do with your clients, Dean. Mm -hmm. You can help them say, look, 
that I can I can diagnose your problem and help you resolve it much quicker than you can do yourself if indeed you can do it yourself and let's face it there's some things that you just can't and and that's exactly where that operational efficiency um is the focus so so uh, when you when you're talking about that i mean some people's experience of consultants and i'll just i'll just be honest some people's experience of consultants is they come in they charge you 25 50 grand and then say i've found there you go i've saved you 25 grand <laughs> <laughs> and, and having been a, a CFO in the, the NHS, um, I, there's probably not a, a large consultancy firm I've not um, had the pleasure of working with. And unfortunately, I've, if I'm honest, I would say that's that's true from some of my experiences. I guess what is different about um, me and my colleagues, and in, in reality, that's why I'm part of this organisation as well, that a twofold. One, um, it's not a generalist, you know, it's not a general person who just looks and says, oh, if you thought about doing this, what you end up with is an absolute expert who can diagnose and say, right, we have looked at your fuel spend, we have looked at your, um, you know, your cost of your consumables in your organisation, and we can see quite quick clearly what's going wrong and how we can overcome that and the other side is dean uh, which i really like about our model if we can't find savings there's no cost so you know the, there's no large there's, there's um, no big consultancy fee to tell you actually there's nothing yeah yeah I, I i mean that's it it's not in the the team's interest to flog a dead horse they'll absolutely say look and you know and some of my clients um that um I work with, you know, sometimes I looked at, you know, my waste specialist, it, 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 only the other week we were looking at, and actually um, my clients probably got the best waste deal we've ever seen ever, you know, and that, but at least they now know that. So mm -hmm. the feedback was you need to be really nice to your supplier, extra nice because ultimately you've got a really good deal that we couldn't with all of our buying power, which is around about 800 million pounds in the UK, all of that buying power, we still can get that, you a better deal be nice to those suppliers. And the client was really grateful for that because, you know, sometimes you think, oh, what have I got? And knowing that it really helps, particularly say when you're going into a recession, all of a sudden that client goes, right, we know we don't need to look at waste because we've got mm -hmm. a great deal. And, you know, there is really something about the looking at every single cost and being really clear because what happens as I said is, you know, people just sort of look down a list of spend and say, yeah, I'll, I'll leave that. Or we looked at it six years ago, um, we we didn't find it then, or you know, we don't really want to change the supplier. And let's face it, change in supply is a pain. Mm -hmm. And what we find is probably sixty percent of the time, our clients save the same supplier. We get them to sharpen the pencil uh, because we know exactly where to look. And and the other time, actually, we'll 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 say like you can stay with your current supplier and save, I don't know, five percent. Or you can go with a supplier that we've worked with for many years following the procurement and you can save 20%. And the choice is there. And what generally happens is people think, oh, we'll, we'll take the small saving and then a couple of years on go, oh, now we're ready for the the kind of the new supplier. Let's, let, let's do that. Because it might seem like pain, but actually generally that 20 odd percent saving also comes with process improvements, which just make a huge difference to an organization. So one of the things i was having a conversation with somebody member of our team actually about I, I know this is about energy but i think it's common for, in a lot of scenarios given that prices are where they are right now there's two schools of thoughts isn't there? there's lock it in now so it doesn't get worse but then there's the other thought of what if it comes down and we're locked in are you seeing people stuck with that dilemma at the moment um so, I mean, the, the good thing is, um, if I was talking to one of my clients, rather than James gives a view, our energy expert would give a view and join the call. And all uh, our energy expert, Richard, does every single day of his life is look at the energy market. What, what I would say is um, there is less of an energy market than there used to be. So there used to be a very, you know, um, you could go out to procurement and get very wildly different rates. That's less of a, a case now. And I think, I think, it's true of anything going into the recession at the moment. What you can't do is hope for the best. Close your eyes and think, I'll just 
I'll just suffer energy and it'll get better in two years because you're hoping for the best, which is not a great um, management tactic. And there is something about, you know, speaking to an expert, so be that Richard for energy with uh, me and my colleagues, that says, what are you seeing? But of course, you're looking into a crystal ball of the unknown. Mm -hmm. What what my advice, you know, would be lock in at the moment. Um, You know, businesses can get six month, year, two year uh, deals. What what a two year deal does, and obviously every organization is different, gives certainty. And at the moment, having some certainty is much better than not, because mm-hmm. there is still potential when we get into the winter for more challenges to come around energy. And it seems unlikely that some magic bullet will um, resolve that over the next 18 months, to two years. OK, so really, it's about making a decision and having certainty on the decision, would you say, at the moment, uh, bring in some certainty because it could go worse. Um, so so when we're thinking about business, one of the big things that everybody gets frustrated with in our home life, but it's common in business as well, is subscriptions. They're, they're a brilliant idea, but also a flipping nightmare as well because they creep in and you can end up, I did one the other day and it turns out we've got two lots of subscription for the same piece of software, right? Uh, and it, they just inflate and inflate. And I suppose this is common across lots of businesses that there's these little add-on costs of, you know, maybe not, to, you know, maybe not 20 quid a month, but there are these 20 quid a month and you go, <laughs> oh, it's only 20 quid a month. And then suddenly you realize you got three and a half grand a month of them. I, th- I think Dean, I, I, Probably with the client base and, you know, ERA works with, you know, relatively small companies right through to, you know, large household brands like IKEA, DFS and BT. So uh, we, we span quite a, a range. And I guess the, the thing that's probably the most similar to what you're saying, but slightly different is where people have a number of suppliers to provide the same goods within the organization. So what generally happens is um, we might do a uh, janitorial project. And we'll start, uh, the team will start to look at invoices. What you find quite quickly, if someone's got three, four, five, six sites within their business, each site is somehow many years ago decided on their own supplier for janitorial items, their own supplier for catering, consumables, stationery, and all of the other bits and pieces. And there's no overall control. So what we then generally do is say, right, um, you've got 20 odd suppliers sometimes, all charging different prices. You'd be amazed when we present back the, the the CFO's face when they realize they've got so many suppliers and different prices from all of them. And then, you know, the best way of dealing with that is a procurement that covers all of it and starts again, which does generate, you know, good savings. You get an economy of scale. But it's a bit like those subscriptions that you don't realize. And it's quite difficult for an organization to look down their P&L and really get a feel for how many suppliers they've got that are overlapping. It's only when our team come in and know the suppliers off by heart that can quite quickly get to that. And I, and I guess it's similar to those subscriptions that you just throw money away. Um, and as I said, the, the, the difference sometimes in unit prices um, shocks the CFOs to the point of, right, come on, let's get on and do it. Um, and, it, you know, to be fair, it's a pain job to do because my team go through – thousands of lines of invoices to present that level of information back and Dean that comes back to the you could do it yourself but it takes a long long time if you're not set up to do it Mm. and if you're doing it in silos in different departments you may not even see the variance because it you know you could get reports back in silos absolutely well absolutely and it's really interesting because the the research into recessions something that surprised me actually was um the best thing to do is have decentralized control so generally as a cfo your first first fourth is right let's bring every decision to the highest level and ban everything we can and the the feedback from history is no decentralized decision making because those decentralized units can see best 
what the customers want and are much more able to respond at an agile level. Mm-hmm. The only bit that misses from that is the helicopter view that makes sure the organization's doing the right things at the right level, which might be some of those bits around what can we consolidate our spend, particularly where organizations have bought subsidiaries over the years, they've added them on and not really brought the the consistency across. And you know, many of the time when we work with clients that are trying to unpick years of various divisions, various management buyouts that have added on businesses and, you know, trying to um, consolidate those is a, you know, a big job, but actually brings rewards to the the customers ultimately. Mm-hmm. So um, it's a bit of a, a thing to throw in here. Um, where do you see the whole Brexit challenge in all of this? How does it play into it or does it exacerbate it? Is it, is it another issue just over there? How does that play into what we're dealing with right now? So when you look at the drivers of inflation at the moment, one of the biggest drivers of inflation is pay, pay inflation. Um, and I know there's lots of people who will be listening to this now thinking my pay has only gone up 5% and you know inflation's at 6 or 7 But we're still starting that conversation with my pay has only gone up by 5%. You know, there's still quite large in isolation pay rises. And the reason for that is we're seeing um, real shortages in the employment market. And because of that, we've had to push prices up um, because what generally happens is staff move from one organization to the other in search for pay rise to retain staff with pushed up pay. So Brexit is a big part of that, Dean. Mm -hmm. what, What we're seeing is far less availability of staff from the EU. We've actually seen an increase in staff from non-EU countries, actually. But that aside, it's not enough to impact um, the loss in Brexit. Mm -hmm. So we have less staff. Um, And did you know, um, most of the seasonal fruit pickers are from Ukraine. Um, So it's not just um, not just some of the Brexit impacts, it's wider, which again is um, pushing up the price of food. So that without doubt is giving us challenges and driving inflation. and, and I've, I think for some of the um, hospitality businesses in particular, we're seeing a lot of the, the be kind messages out there, the please bear with us, we're short on staff. And of course, when your your staff then say we're going to leave, you, you then start throwing money at the problem, saying they will, we'll pay you more, we'll pay you more. And of course, all that does is then push the business to the mm-hmm. brink of what's my margin. So it's a real tough one. Mm-hmm. But without doubt, Brexit quietly has had an impact. It's mm-hmm. just been lost in the noise of COVID and, unfortunately, the Ukraine issues. So when we think I've been watching um, um, interviews recently with James Callaghan, the Labour prime minister in the 70s, who was kind of fighting kind of hyperinflation. And they put in wage controls. They stopped you increasing pay. And we're now in a... You know, I, I don't want to, I, I don't, you know, the average income on the UK, um, and I think, you know, the private sector, you know, let's strip out the Starbucks and the big corporates here, the behemoths who make billions. Let's just leave them to one side because the vast majority of of jobs in this country are actually with, you know, small to medium-sized enterprises and you go one step further and drill it down. And and I think it's something like 90% of all businesses in the UK are solopreneurs. Now, if we just look at that and go, well, hang on a minute, let's, let's ignore these, these big companies. Um, it's quite tough for a small business to, to combat inflation because they're being pincered on all sides. You know, you look at somewhere like Starbucks, they make huge, huge margins on what they do. And most businesses are not making seven, eight hundred percent margins <laughs> or, or, or seven hundred, eight hundred percent markup. They're not making 80 percent margin on stuff. It's an unpopular thing to say, but a lot of employees may not appreciate the difficulty this pr- places on a business when they're being squeezed in all directions. You know, if you're declaring a billion pound profit, like, you know, I think BT's declared 1.9 billion profit. It's like, it's hard to, um, to say, oh, we can't afford a pay rise. 
It is, and we saw this with Rolls Royce the other day. Actually, the kind of the offering the the bonus payments, and you know, the the unions sort of um, voted against it. And I I I think it's a real tough one. I, I think you know one of the factors that would slow um, inflation without that is is wage controls um you know I, I i don't for a minute imagine boris will announce that on on tv anytime soon although um it, it, it never, it, never. It, I, it, I, it I all knocks on doesn't it it all it knocks on because if if you know i'm sure everybody deserves a pay rise after what's happened the last few years really everybody deserves a bit more money in the pocket but if if you look at it if if we start to go well hang on a minute the train drivers need more money. The ambulance drivers need more money. Everybody needs more money. You end up where, one, you exacerbate the kind of great resignation where people are going, I'm going to move because somebody's going to give me more money. So you exacerbate the fact that some of the businesses just can't fight the race of the big companies. But also, then those the companies that do give the rates go, well, we need to increase prices yeah, to cover it. Absolutely, Dean. And it, it is a tough one. I mean, what, what I always advise um, any of my clients to do really is look at, you know, heavily incentivized bonus payments uh, because they don't bake in a, a level of inflation. Uh, but if the company delivers X, Y, Z and has done well, then sharing that with employees is a really good incentive. Um, so that that's always a, a really good place to to look at and it does it does find a balance um for as many people as possible um but you're right dean you know the the businesses um you know only have so many choices if you put prices up you can lose customers and i, I guess all, all of this is why we're starting to talk about recession more and more because ultimately households are seeing costs go up i mean my food delivery that came you know a few hours ago you know i can believe what i got for what it cost you know and i'm not alone in that and households are making tough decisions we've seen netflix for the first time ever um you know see the first quarter of um, reduction in subscribers because households are saying we need to cut back um people will be cutting back on large household imply appliance investments so that's what's now starting to impact on um on consumer confidence and ultimately will probably take us towards recession so all of this is linked um you know if it was me i would probably think the government could probably do more around the energy cap i mean ultimately energy caps are the ones that are hitting most people and for some households i mean i was lucky i did a, a two-year deal you know my hit will be next february um so it, it's not just a straightforward in october every household feels the same pain it depends on fixed um fixed rates but what we will see is without doubt the economy shrink as a result of all of this um challenge and i think for whether it's businesses or um individuals it is about looking to see what sensible decisions can be made um, within a household or a business budget to be as efficient as they can. And yeah, checking your own bank account as an individual is a cracking place to start. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that kind of, that cost of coffee once, twice, three times a week or even a day for some people, you know, it it, it adds up as do all of those subscriptions that you talked about, Dean. There are stuff people can do to weather the storm because I, I use the phrase weather the storm because it is a storm mm -hmm. to get through to the other side. In 18 months, things will calm down. Um, it just takes some time to get to that point. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of strain on people though, isn't it? After... After two years of we yeah. have to just get through this, <laughs> it's then yeah, basically another two years to get through this. Oh, without doubt, Dean. I mean, I, you, you you can't help but feel for those families that are thinking like literally on the breadline, and you know those families that were just about okay. The the energy costs etc has pushed them over, and we're going to be heading towards Christmas just at the time that the energy cap is going to have the next hike. You know, this is a real worrying time for many families and individuals and the sad time with recession also sees a lot of um a lot of job losses as well and you know i said at the start you know not making knee-jerk um, reactions but some organizations will sadly have to reduce their headcount so all of that is just happening at the wrong time and you know certainly i think the government should do more to support kind of um households particularly around you know debt finance debt 
coaching, you know, make sure um, the support that's needed because there's going to be a lot of worry out there as we head towards the end of this calendar year. But there is light at the end of the tunnel and, and you're, you're kind of helping businesses go, let's get ready for this without making a hundred grand commission without, you know, consultancy fee, without delivering any value. You're, you're all about kind of finding the places to save money. Yeah, I mean, what what we do is absolutely about finding value and finding value that organisations wouldn't be able to do themselves. Um, and without doubt, an organisation that is well um, well run, um, no matter how good it is, external support can often find some savings that you know just not aware of. And you know, many of my clients think, "Wow, actually, we we, we never knew X Y Z existed until till you and your team came along." And you know, we we see that time and time again. But it is about operation efficiency and doing the right things, not just blindly losing staff and being. Um, sort of those knee-jerk responses because that's where you're just unable to seize the opportunities because opportunities might be your competitors doing the wrong thing and mm -hmm. if your competitors start to lose customers because they've cut back on quality you need to be best placed to do that if you've got rid of all of your you know staff um you're unable to do that so it's really about making the right decisions and being as efficient as you know as can possibly and you know that's why we i think we cover 70 or 80 cost areas you know pretty much every overhead you can imagine from you know insurance to fuel to fleet to everything in between you know me and a team do and and that can really help an organization because it's not always what you know it's the the things you don't know that um you know, catch you out mm. So, James, how do you how do you work? What's the best way people can get in touch with you if they go, do you know what? We just need to get somebody in to sort this out for us. Well, I'd always happily have a conversation with people. And, um, you know, like all things, um, I'll always steer people in the right way if I if I can't help, because that's um, what I've done. Um, you know, so I've been a CFO a long time, so always happy to help. Um, best thing to do is either um, find me on LinkedIn, um, James Rummer. Um, you will definitely be able to find me. There's not many James Rimmers out there. Um, or just um, drop me a, an email, which is jrimmer at expensereduction.com. Cool. James, thank you so much for joining me for my unscripted questions. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Couple of tough ones, Dean, but I expected that. And uh, I didn't give you I didn't give you any prep, so well done on that, especially with the prickly questions. <laughs> No, no, Dean, it's great, much appreciated. And I, and to be fair, just, you know, thank you for all you and the guys do at Maverick as well. I've got to say, I think as much as I'm saying organisations need our support, actually, um, what the, the great support you and your team do as well, you know, actually makes a real difference to those of us who, you know, try and, try and use LinkedIn and, and some of us have got much better through um, your support than others. So, you know, can only... I'll thank, pay uh, you later for saying yeah. that. <laughs> Cool. James, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, guys, I'll put James's details around wherever you're listening, watching. So do uh, go find him, uh, connect with him, hit the bell, uh, and you can DM him or email him if you're curious about how you can save money. Um, and it's a win-win basically, isn't it, James? It absolutely is. Yeah, absolutely. I say no win, no fee, which sounds rubbish, but actually it means we have to work really, really hard on your behalf to find savings. So yeah. it absolutely is a win-win. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, James.